wonderful pile of blocks, baby. But be careful you don't make it too high. Oh, you knocked it over. That wasn't very nice. Well, I'm leaving, Mabel. I hope you have everything in that suitcase. I don't want you coming back. Fine wife you are. The doc and his wife fire me, and you ask if you can stay to take care of that kid. Why I don't break your neck, I don't know. Oh, please leave me. You're upsetting the baby. Don't worry. I'm not going to hit Mabel again. You certainly aren't. Here. Here's your salary. Now get out, or I'll have the doctor come upstairs. Here's your money, Robert. Keep your money. What's a few dollars to me when I'm worth 25000 Oh, are you? Well, I'm going to be as soon as I sell that pearl necklace of yours. My necklace is in the safe right here. At least it was half hour ago. I saw it. And you haven't been out of the house all morning. You can't have it. <laughs> Open the safe and see, Mrs. Williams. That's exactly what I'm doing. Never mind the combination. It's already open. Well, Bob, did you open that safe? Sure I did, and I took out the pearls. Are they there, Mrs. Williams? No. No, the pearls weren't there. But this gun was. And you're going to stand right where you are, Robert, until the police get here. Sure, sure. Call the police, Mrs. Williams. But I'll tell you something. I've got your necklace, but the cops can search me and this house from top to bottom and never find it. It's summer money time. Yes, it's summer money time. Come to Beneficial now. It's summer money time. Right now, it's summer money time at Beneficial Finance Company. Get the cash you want for a wonderful vacation, to clean up leftover bills, or for any good reason. You'll find the service just a little faster, just a little friendlier. And you get this beneficial extra, your own international credit card. Good for cash wherever you go. Cash, just say the word, you're the boss at Beneficial And now, meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. All right, clear your throat now, Blackie, and try your voice. <coughs> oh, wait a minute now, wait, another <coughs> spray or two, and then try it. All right, now. I think it's be... It'll be all right now, Dr. Williams. It should be, Blackie. I haven't used it for two weeks. Say, this is the day I've been waiting for. May I use your phone? Of course. Use the one on the right. The other phone connects with my apartment upstairs. This is what you really call a home office, huh? <laughs> you could put your voice to better use than that, Blackie. I'm going to put it to a great use, Dr. Williams. I'm going to phone Inspector Faraday and really tell him off. Oh, excuse me. Here's my apartment calling. Yes? Dr. Williams, this is Mabel. Yes, Mabel, what is it? Something the matter with the baby? Dr. Williams, call the police right away. What? Bob, my husband, has stolen Mrs. Williams' pearl necklace, and she's holding him here with a gun. I'll be right upstairs. I'll call the police from there. Come on, Blackie, upstairs. What's the matter? My wife's pearl necklace has been stolen. Just call the police, Doctor. Have them look for it. But... If Inspector Faraday finds out I was upstairs in your apartment a few minutes ago, he won't look for the pearls. He'll look for me. So long. <laughs> Let's tear this room apart if we have to. We'll find that necklace for you, Mrs. Williams. Now, this is the last room in the house. It has to be in here. Keep looking, Rollins. You didn't find anything on Robert, Inspector? No, not a thing, Dr. Williams. He's in the next room putting his clothes on. Say, do you know who Robert Atkins is? Oh, no. One of the most famous jewel thieves in the country. Yes, yes, but this time you don't have anything on me, copper. I'm getting out of here. Not a thing in this room, Inspector. It's bound to be in here, Rollins. Keep looking. Okay, Inspector, Robert here hasn't been out of the house today. The jewels were in the safe this morning. The necklace must be somewhere in this house. I know that, Doctor. But tell me where I haven't searched in this house, and that's where you'll find the stolen pearls. Stolen, Inspector? You mean missing, don't you? Stolen. You admitted you stole them, didn't you? Not to you, I didn't. And until you can prove I took them, those pearls are just missing. And you're going to have to let me go. Go ahead, Atkins. Beat it. I know you don't have the pearls on you. So you're not getting away with a thing. Don't be too sure. I'm plenty sure. I'm sure those pearls are still in this house. 
And I'm going to put a police guard on duty here to make sure you never get back in to pick him up. Now, Scram. With pleasure, with pleasure. Inspector, you shouldn't have let him go. I had to let him go, Mrs. Williams. I have nothing on him. But don't worry. I won't let him out of sight. Hey, Rollins. Yes, sir. You and Thompson trail Atkins. One of you keep an eye on him all the time. You bet, Inspector. Come on, Thompson. We don't want him to get Inspector out. Faraday. Yes, Doctor? If Robert hasn't walked out with those pearls, if he couldn't have taken them out of the house this morning, if they're still in this house, where are they? If I could answer that one, Dr. Williams, I'd quit the force and work on quiz programs. Oh, excuse me, I thought everyone had gone. No, Mabel. Robert is gone. He didn't have the pearls. Oh, I'm so glad. He was lying then, wasn't he? No, oh, Mrs. Atkins. I don't think he was lying. As I told you before, I think he stole those pearls. And I think you're in on the scheme with him. Oh, please, Inspector. Just because I married a thief, that doesn't mean I'm one, too. You know Mabel doesn't have a necklace, Inspector. You had to make him search her, and she found nothing. Yeah, I know that. That's all I do know. Atkins took those pearls. He hasn't got them. His wife here should know where they are. She says she doesn't. Oh, what a mess. There's only one thing missing from this case. Hello, Inspector Faraday. Uh-huh. Here's that one thing. Blackie, what are you doing here? I came to see Dr. Williams, but one look at your face convinces me you need a doctor more than I do. Hello, Blackie. Blackie, how are you? Hello, Mrs. Williams. Hello, oh, Doctor. Well, now that Faraday's here, what else has been stolen? How'd you know anything was stolen here, Blackie? I heard it over the radio, so I thought I'd come over and solve the whole case for you, Inspector. Well, go back and listen to your radio again. Maybe you'll hear of a case in South America. I'm interested only in your cases, Faraday, the ones that are never solved until I come along. Uh, well, you can get along this time, because this one is already solved. Bob Atkins stole those pearls. Can you prove it? Can I prove it? Can I prove it? Why? No. <laughs> All right, Faraday. Where do you want me to begin? Begin by going out the door and end by staying out of my way. And leave you muddled up in the middle? Oh, nothing doing. I couldn't do that to you or my conscience. Please, please, not so loud. The baby doesn't like it. Mabel, I think you'd better take Carolyn inside. Yes, Dr. Williams, right away. Now, let's see. Where were we? Getting nowhere, I'm afraid, Blackie. Right, well, I'm getting somewhere. Out of here. And you get out of this case, Blackie. You know what I'll get out of it, Faraday. The solution. And my own personal satisfaction. Uh, don't pay any attention to anything he says, Mrs. Williams. But, uh... Now, uh, I'm leaving a policeman and a matron here to search everybody every time they go out of this house. Those pearls are still here. And somebody's trying to get them out. We understand, of course. I'm going back to headquarters until I hear from the men trailing Atkins. I'll be in touch with you as soon as I know something. All right, Inspector. Thanks, Mrs. Williams. Thanks. Blackie, for what? For not telling Faraday that I was up here this morning just before you missed the pearls. Why, you know, I just didn't think of it. Or I would have told him, I guess. Oh, there's the doorbell. Mabel? Yes, Mrs. Williams. Can you answer the door, please? Yes, ma'am. You know, I think Faraday made a mistake, Blackie. Atkins took those pearls out of here when the inspector let him go. I doubt it. The police searched them, and they're very thorough. Mrs. Williams. Yes, Mabel. Uh, Mr. Horace Spaulding to see you uh, from the insurance company. Oh, yes. We've been expecting him. No. That will be all, Mabel. Yes. Sir. I'm Mrs. Williams, Mr. Spaulding. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Williams? Uh, this is my husband. How do you how do, do, you do Doctor? And uh, this is Boston Blackie. How, how do you do? That uh, was quite a valuable necklace you lost, Mrs. Williams. You have it insured with my company for $50,000. And it's really more valuable than that. Yes, I know. So suppose we get right to work and see if we can't find it. The police think our handyman, Robert, took it. But nothing was found on him. I'll get my report on him directly from the police, Mrs. Williams. But can you tell me who was in the house at the time the robbery was discovered? Well, Robert and his wife Mabel were here. I was, of course, and my husband was downstairs in his office mm -hmm. with Boston Blackie. Oh, Oh, Blackie, I'm so sorry. Austin Blackie, huh? Hmm. It seems to me that name has appeared in connection with several jewel robberies. Arrests, but no convictions, Spalding. <laughs> There's always a first time, you know. Uh, you'll hear from me later, Mrs. Williams. And, uh, Blackie, I think perhaps you will, too. <coughs> Inspector Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Horace Spaulding of the National Insurance Company. Oh, yes, Spaulding. Uh, did you get my report on the Williams Jewel robbery? Yes, thanks. It just arrived. Your men are still training Robert Atkins? Uh, yes, I just heard from them. Atkins hasn't made a suspicious move yet. 
But give him time, he will. Uh, you think you have the right man? Well, I don't have the proof yet, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a little tip, Inspector. Yeah, what? It's just possible that Doctor and Mrs. Williams are crying wolf for the insurance company. Uh huh. You may have something there. I think I'll follow that up. Say, uh, that necklace was insured for plenty, wasn't it? Fifty thousand. Well, maybe they did rob themselves. So I'm going out to see them about that. Now you know who I'm going to see? No, who? Boston Blackie. Oh, no. No, he's not mixed up in this. He can't be. He might be, Inspector, because he was in the house when Mrs. Williams discovered the robbery. I think maybe that's something you want to know. Something? When Blackie's at the scene of a crime, that's all I want to know. <laughs> That's fine, Mary. Well, I have some work to do right here in my apartment, so phone me here as soon as you're through, huh? Okay, goodbye. Come in. Mind the visitor, Blackie? No, not at all, especially one I've been expecting, like you. How's the insurance business, Pauling? Mm, picking up. Picking up what? Clues? And people who steal pearl necklaces we insure. Subtle, aren't you? Blackie... I'm convinced that there's more than one person involved in the theft of the Williams pearls. I'm sure Atkins isn't working alone. Excuse me. Keep the conversation short, will you? I don't have too much time. Hello? Blackie, this is Peggy Williams. Oh, yes. Blackie, I want to apologize for telling that insurance agent you were here. Oh, that's all right. I would have told him myself sooner or later. He'll be coming to see you, I guess. I know that. He's here right now. You mean he was, yeah? Hey, Spaulding, wait a minute. He's there now, Blackie? Well, he was, but all of a sudden he just walked out the door. I wonder why. Well, I don't know, but I, I think I'd better go out and try to catch him. I think he knows something. About the pearls? Well, he seems to have some theory about uh, how they were taken and uh, who took them. All I could get out of him was a word or two. Blackie, you really think he knows who took them? I'm going out and try to catch him in the hall and find out. I'll call you back. Goodbye. Made him leave like that. Hey, Spaulding! But. Wow. They say dead men tell no tales. And you're not going to be an exception to the rule, are you? Uh oh, the elevator. Hello, Blanky. Goodbye, Faraday. Who's that on the floor, Blanky? What's the matter with him? That's Spaulding, the insurance detective. And there's nothing wrong with him that a little life wouldn't cure. You did it, Blanky, and I... Hey, what's the idea of pulling out a gun? Why, Inspector? To make sure you don't bother me while I pull out of here right now. And now back to Boston Blackie. Blackie is in trouble with the police. He's suspected of stealing a $50,000 pearl necklace and accused of killing the insurance agent investigating the case. So far, Faraday has been able neither to catch Blackie nor find the missing pearls, which Bob Atkins said he stole. But the police cannot find the necklace... So Atkins is a free man, although he is being shadowed by the police. Faraday, however, is turning most of his attention on Blackie, who, as we return to our story, is in the basement workshop of Dr. Williams, from whose home the necklace was stolen. You look pretty good with a hammer and nails, Dr. Williams. <laughs> well, carpentry's my hobby, Blackie. 
I've, uh... I've made most of the baby's toys down here, you know. Wagon or building squares. That uh, string of blocks she plays with all the time. And, and her toy box. Uh-huh. And this, uh... Believe it or not, this is going to be a dollhouse. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> Say, look, Blackie. Maybe you shouldn't be here. Oh, it's safe for the moment. I locked Faraday in my apartment before I left. It should take him a while to get out. Who murdered that fellow Spaulding, Blackie? Ask Faraday, and he'll tell you why I did. Well, now, look, if he thinks that, I don't see how you got away from him. Oh, it was very simple. I found Spaulding dead in the hall. The minute Faraday stepped out of the elevator, I pulled a gun on him, backed him into a closet in my apartment, locked the door, and beat it. Well, uh, how are you going to get away from him the second time? I'm going to make sure that there isn't any second time. I think we'd better tell Mrs. Williams or the baby's nurse to warn us if Faraday shows up, though. Oh, the, uh, the nurse went out about an hour ago and hasn't come back yet. Harry. Oh, I... Harry, come up here quickly. That's my wife upstairs. Come on. Right with you, Doctor. Yeah, this way, up these stairs. Okay. I'm right with you. Peggy! Peggy, where are you? What's the matter? What's wrong? I'm in here. Harry, look. Look at poor Mabel. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in so much trouble. Mabel, what happened to you? It's Bob. You saw him, Mabel? Where? Just a few blocks from here. I met him on the street. Tried to force me to go with him. When I wouldn't, he hit me and knocked me down. He wanted you to go with him? Where? I don't know. He didn't say. But he got away from the policemen who were trailing him. And he's leaving town on the five o'clock train. Leaving town? And that means he has the pearls. He wouldn't leave it without them. Where's the phone? On that desk there, Blackie. What are you going to do, Blackie? Phone Faraday. This is something he ought to know. Oh, look, wouldn't Faraday already know us? He's supposed to have men peddling Atkins. Could be, but Atkins is no fool. According to Mabel, he took them hours ago. Well, if Atkins got away from Faraday's men, maybe he killed that insurance agent. I've thought that for some time. Mabel, I think you'd better come upstairs with me and let me fix those cups. All right, Mrs. Williams, thank you very much. Hello, Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Blackie. Stay where you are, Blackie. You're under arrest. And you're under delusions, Inspector. Where are you? Never mind where I am. I just called you to tell you that Robert Atkins is leaving on the 5 o'clock train. He's going to catch that train unless you go down to the station and catch him. I told you when you brought me in your office, Inspector Faraday, you wouldn't find the pearls on me. That's right, Atkins, so I didn't. But we'll find them in that suitcase of yours. You have to have some reason for trying to get on that five o'clock train. Well, sure, I had a reason. I needed a vacation. And I don't like to be yanked off trains. I could sue you for false arrest for this. Uh, you'll sue me from jail, then. And maybe the warden will be your lawyer. Yeah, Rollins? No luck, Inspector. What do you mean, no luck? We tore this guy's suitcase into little pieces and no necklace. Well, I'll be. You'll be seeing me, Inspector. Wait a minute, Atkins. What for? You don't have anything on me. You ever hear of a guy named Horace Spaulding? No. You know he was murdered earlier this afternoon? No. Well, I think you know him. And I think you killed him. You don't hold me for what you think. Now, let me tell you something. I've been nice about this so far. You've tried to arrest me twice, and I haven't squawked. So? Now, get this and get it straight. You lay a hand on me once more, and I'll go straight up to the D.A. And you'll go straight back to pounding a beat. <laughs> Understand it, Doctor Williams. If Atkins didn't take those pearls out of his house, they're well, they're still here somewhere. But where, Blackie? The police searched everywhere, and so have we. Faraday said on the phone he had to let Atkins go again. Yes, yes, and poor Mayboy. I, I had to warn her to be careful when she went out. Mm. She got one beating from her husband. I'm just afraid if they meet again, she'll get another. You're right. She's in the spot. I don't imagine she'll feel safe until Faraday does put her husband in jail. Well, I won't feel safe till we tag Spaulding's killer and find those pearls. Blackie, you really think those pearls are in this house? Well, they... They haven't taken out a policeman and a police matron such as everyone who goes out of the house, don't they? Yeah, I know I'm searched every time I go out on a call. And your wife and Mabel, too. Yes, every one of us, every time we go out. Oh, Dr. Williams... I'm taking Carolyn out for a walk in the park. Oh, all right, Mabel, but don't keep her out too long. No, I won't. Uh, wait a minute, Mabel. Uh, I'll go to the door with you. That won't be necessary. I want to talk to you. Oh? 
Doctor. Take your time. Well, bye-bye. Mabel, Why, I know it's a relief to you to know your husband isn't in jail, but by the same token, don't you think it's unsafe for you to go out walking? Why is it? Well, he's still under suspicion, you know. He's being watched by the police. If you happen to meet him again, the police might begin to suspect you, too. I'm not worried about that. How can I have the pearls? I was just searched by the matron. Mabel, if you're in trouble, do you know it? No, I don't. Well, you are. And I'd like to help you. I don't want your help, thank you. Why not? You're in trouble with the police yourself. Am I? You were found with that insurance man's body, and you pulled a gun on that police inspector. If I'm seen with you, it'll really get me in trouble with the police. All right, Mabel. You don't say I didn't offer. Maybe you'll end up needing help from me. Ever think of that? No, I don't like unpleasant thoughts. Then let's forget the whole thing. Come on, baby. Oh, what was that all about, Blackie? Oh, nothing, Dr. Williams. Say, look. Is that a police car pulling up in front of the house? It's not only a police car, it's Faraday's. Oh, and he's getting out of it. And I'm getting out of here. Oh, you like it in the park, don't you, Carolyn? Oh, you saw that squirrel, didn't you? Well, maybe there's a pigeon over there by those bushes. Shall we go see? The bird you're looking for is right here, honey. Oh, Bob, you scared me. How's everything? Wonderful, darling. It's worked, hasn't it? Oh, it sure has, honey. You mean it uh, almost worked, honey? Blackie. Yes, Bob? I've got a small gun and a great desire to use it if you two don't behave. What do you want? You and Mabel back in the house. What for? To see an inspector about an inspection. <laughs> Stop it, will you? Or I'll get self-conscious. Go on, Bob. Mabel into the room. Now. All right, all right. What are you doing with Atkins, Blackie? I don't have anything on him. No, Faraday, but I do. And on his charming wife, too. He's lying. You want to hear my lies, Faraday? No. All I want is you. Why, Faraday, how you talk. All right. So I want those stolen pearls, too. And you're going to deliver the pearls, huh? Yes, I'm going to deliver the pearls, huh? Well, let's see you do it. Watch closely, Faraday. To recover the pearl necklace, I first have to steal a wooden necklace. A baby Carol here. Don't take away your necklace. You'll cry. Faraday is going to cry much louder in a minute. Well, I'll give this back to you, Carol. Oh, this is crazy. That's a good girl, Carol. Now, don't cry. Don't cry. Wonderful way I have with children, isn't it? Give that string of blocks back to the baby. In a second. Right after I pull the string of pearls out of it. What? Well, that's it. That's the necklace. Well, I'll... How did it get in there? Simple. Atkins used some of the doctor's tools to hollow out the inside of the wooden necklace. Then he strung the pearls inside it. His plan was to leave the house and then pick up the necklace when his wife took the baby for a walk in the park. Well, what do you know? Okay, I'm taking Atkins and his wife in for attempted robbery. Don't move, either of you. But, Blanky, I'm taking you in for murder. You're being taken in by murder, Faraday. Don't you know who really killed Spaulding? I think Atkins did. No, that's impossible. I thought that once, but when I checked, I found out Atkins was across town having lunch when Spaulding was killed. Thanks for that information, Faraday. Just proves how right I was about who did the killing. Mabel. What? You said you were bruised and cut this noon because your husband beat you. That's right. And you said you met him only a few blocks from here. I didn't. What are you trying to do, Mabel? Put me near the scene of a killing so I'll really get a rap? I didn't see you today until out in the park just now. Thanks, Bob. Maybe they'll lighten your sentence by a hundred years for that. Hey, look, you haven't proved Mabel killed that guy. He can't. You've as much as admitted it to me, Mabel. You came up to my apartment this noon, probably to see me to find out how much I knew about you and Bob. I had no reason to kill that insurance man. You did when you got to the door of my apartment. You heard him say that he was sure there was more than one person involved in the stealing of this necklace, and that meant you. You probably made some noise while I was on the phone and Spaulding ran out to investigate. That's a lie. I was never near your apartment. If you were never near my apartment, Mabel... How did you know I was in trouble with the law for pulling a gun on the inspector here when he caught me with Spaulding's body? She knew that? Yes, she knew that, uh, Faraday. How did you know it, Mabel? Why, I... 
I found out from... Uh, from... You knew it because you were there hiding in the alcove near the back stairs. You just stabbed Spalding and hadn't had a chance to leave the floor before I came out in the hall. It's a lie. Maybe... Maybe the doctor told me what you did. I didn't tell her a word, Blackie. Thanks, Dr. Williams. The word you didn't tell her is the word I wanted Faraday to hear. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Atkins, a pearl necklace isn't the only thing that will be worn around a neck this season. In your case, it may be a rope. <laughs> 